Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Asperger Studio Stories. Today on the show, I'm talking with another ASD life coach from ASD Life Coaching. Today, I'm talking with Akila Pinado. We learned a lot about her and why she chose her career path as she did and why she chose life coaching for ASD. So stay tuned, sit back, relax, and grab your favorite beverage, and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Asperger Studios Presents Stories. Today, I'm joined with Akila. Welcome to the show, Akila. Hello, how are you? Hello out there, everyone. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into becoming an ASD life coach? Okay, so my name is Akila Peinado, and I have been in coaching, I want to say officially since 2016. So I started a company named Slate of Clutter, in 2016, here it is. It was supposed to be a professional organizing company, but I was led into a different, a different direction. And it was like, it's not professional organizing, it's more emotional organizing. So as, as much as I am still a neat freak and I am still a living minimalist, I do not believe in keeping a lot of things around me. And that was kind of the spiel of my business. Allow me to help you declutter and you know show you how you don't have to live with 50 shoes or 100 shirts or what have you, right? But then I noticed that when I was helping people to declutter, the process was more emotional than anything. I'm talking about, I came across pictures of people who hadn't been in relationships with the people in the pictures, like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, for years, eight, 10, 12 years. I'm like, and you can't get rid of this? And oh. then the story, yeah and then the stories attached to i'm sorry go ahead Mm -hmm. so like emotional hoarders yes and then the stories attached to it i said hold up we need a you know we need to kind of work on that first before we can even let go of the physical things and that's how my business kind of pivoted to helping you know daily motivating people and encouraging people to live out their truth, to, co- to communicate effectively, to communicate honestly, to love themselves fully and truthfully. So I did that hmm, for about two years before I started doing speaking engagements in 2019. And I believe that's how Fran found out about me because um, I've been doing speaking engagements. So every month in 2019, I had a speaking engagement. It was a wild year, very, very wild year. And um, of course, my name starts to get out there and everything like that. People are connecting me to people X, Y, and Z. Eventually, I met Francisco, holla, holla. And I eventually met Jacqueline. <laughs> and I was introduced to this whole new world of um, dealing with people, adults, particularly who are on the spectrum. Now, being honest, I had really never heard of that demographic. When you think about autism, Asperger's, things of that nature, it's always kids. Mm -hmm. But when I was peaked and and, and pinched about helping adults with it, oh, my, my ears automatically went up. I was off of that. So after linking with Jacqueline, after a few months, it did not happen right away. I was able to go for my certification. And um, here I am helping you wonderful people. (laughs) <laughs> and I love it. I love, love, love it. I love all of my clients, past and present. And I'm grateful. That's that's how I got here. All right. So let's start off with, where did you grow up? I grew up in the northern New Jersey area. So it isn't the bulk of my adolescence was spent in Patterson, New Jersey. But I've lived in Palisades Park. I've lived in Prospect Park. I've like I've lived in many different places. But I graduated from grammar school in Patterson and I graduated from high school in Patterson. All right. What motivates you, inspires you, and drives you? Honestly, wanting people to live authentically, especially in the work that we do. Even before I was working with ASD Life Coaching, I come across so many people who are so afraid to be themselves and it's heartbreaking. They go years upon years upon years living out someone else's dreams, living out someone else's truths, and never fully recognizing their own voice. And that's just unacceptable to me. So it's almost like a life mission or crusade to change that in people. (laughs) It's almost like me because I am so against 
the whole masking idea because why should you go through life pretending you're somebody else? Yeah, I hate it. I know society doesn't look yeah. looks differently on us because we're different. We act different. We talk mm-hmm. differently. We think differently. But why mm-hmm. should we hide who we are in front of everyone else? I agree. 100 percent. I agree. Be, I mean, it should be the other way around. They should treat us differently and we shouldn't hide who we are. They should accept us for who we are. End of story. I 100 agree. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the best compliment you've ever gotten? Oh, gosh, Reed. Jeez. Uh, I feel safe with you. Yes. That's, feel, that's the compliment. Oh, Akila, okay. I feel, <laughs> Akila, I feel safe with you. That is a good compliment, actually. I mean, it, it means a lot. It does. It does. Yeah, that one yeah. for sure. All right. What is the biggest fail? What is your biggest failure? And what did you learn from that experience? Hmm. I want to say not believing in myself. When I was growing up, I had this idea that I was the fattest person in the world. And when I look back at pictures of myself, I was probably the skinniest I ever was. And I hated myself for all of these superficial things. And I'm, and it really makes me, I mean, looking back, I've grown so much from being that person. But when I look back and think about how those erroneous beliefs stole time from me, it does break my heart. And I wish I didn't believe those, those lies about myself. So that could have, that's possibly my biggest regret. All right. Tell me about three influential people in your life and how they impacted you. Okay, my mother, that's number one. My mother had me at the age of 17 and pulled up herself by the bootstraps. I mean, literally, and created a life that most wouldn't have been able to do with the car she was dealt. So when I think about how she persevered with her struggles, I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I've had to deal with comparing myself to her because I, I value her so much. But when I think about, excuse me, how she's persevered so much in life, she inspires me. Another person is my grandmother who's 86 years old. She still, she still travels on her own. She still lives on her own. Okay. And is just, and I mean, how do you make it to 86 years old? Right? Like, how do you make Mm -hmm. it there? And when I think about what she had to overcome, she's lived in multiple countries and eventually came to this country. So her family could have a better life. And she almost did that single-handedly. And how do you do that in those days? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm trying to think about a third person because I want to say it's the collective of people that have inspired me. It was like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Like it's a collective. I grab and take from people what builds me. You know what I mean? So I can't really necessarily give you a third person off the top of my head, but I look for qualities such as, because I think strength is such an arbitrary word. But I look for more perseverance, honesty, like the the tenets of what I, who I am, honesty, truth, good communication. Those are the things that I look for in people who were able to build themselves from the ashes because it's not always easy to do. So true. Mm -hmm. All right. What makes you feel inspired or like your best self? When I'm taking care of myself, believe it or not. There was a period in my life when I did not take care of myself. And I must say that was probably the lowest, one of the lowest periods of my life. And I am all for being there for other people. Trust, I'm a coach and I'm in school I, prior to 2020. No, in 2020, but prior to like the bulk of COVID, I was in school to get my master's in counseling. So my life is dedicated to helping people. But I had to learn the hard way that if you do not take care of yourself, it don't make no sense you try and help nobody else. And I got so caught up in being everything to everyone else and being nothing to myself that I beat myself into the ground. So when I'm taking care of myself, when I'm walking and drinking my water Mm -hmm. and getting my eight hours of sleep and, you know, de-stressing and decompressing, I feel amazing and inspired. I do. All All right. Finish this sentence. I'm at my best when. Hmm when I'm being compassionate. And I feel that from you. When I'm being, sorry about that, a call came through. When I'm being compassionate, I'm at my best. 
All right. If you can turn back time and talk to your 18 year old self, what would you tell her now about where you are now in life? <laughs> Sis, you are going to do better than you ever thought. And this weight you think you have on your body, it's all in your head. And that boy you think you in love with, you are not going to marry him. And trust me, thank God. Okay. <laughs> thank God that you didn't marry him. Okay. Because you met someone a million times better than that. All right. If you can have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Hearts. I'm obsessed with hearts. And something like my first tattoo says love is, and it's a heart. I have a big collage on my back of hearts and roses. I am obsessed with them. So it would have to be something with either a red heart and something in black and white. Cause I'm obsessed with that palette, you know? Mm -hmm. So it would be that, that represents me. Minimalist, love, happiness, that simplicity, that's me. All right. What do you think the world would look like in five years from now? Mm, that's a good question. <sighs> Hopefully mask free. Good God help us. I hope I don't have to be walking around in a mask every day. Hopefully a woman will be president, not vice president, but a, a woman will actually be president in the next five years. And... Hopefully we'll have more understanding of what happened now because we're in COVID right now. So we really don't know what the hell is going on. Right. But hopefully in five years, we'll know what all of this meant. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. All right. What was your favorite subject in school? Reading English, anything with literature. My first degree is in English. All right. Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Both both all right i've come across a lot of people that say they are both yeah i think you need both all right if you could be remembered for one thing what would it be and why being that safe space i want people when i want when people think about me whether i'm gone from this world or just out of their life they could be like you know what one thing i always had a good conversation with her and she never made me feel judged never uh, that would that would really make me happy. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where you are now in life? Hmm. Well, right now, I am a mother of two beautiful children. I'm a wife and I'm working and I'm doing the coaching at the same time, which I let me tell you something. I count this a tremendous opportunity. I think what Jacqueline is doing with her company is groundbreaking. And I'm really, really, truly grateful to be a part of it. Prior to this, I was kind of in a place of, I don't know what to do next in my career. And this really helped catapult me into knowing, okay, it's not over for you, Akila. You know, like you still got a little bit left in the, um, cause you know, COVID came and all my speaking engagements stopped and I kind of had to pivot in my business, you know, and it's been hard. I'm not going to lie. It's been hard trying to, find my footing again. So ASD life coaching came at the right time. So that is where I am now. I'm just in a place of, I'm not sure of what's next. I know, I know things will never go back to being what they are, but I'm learning to be content with what I have. All right. Now we get to the part of the show. Everyone wants to hear most likely the questions. What is your favorite word? <laughs> is this PG rated? I don't know. What this, um, <laughs> So my favorite word is love. Let's just go with generic love. I have it on my body, so love. All right. What is your least favorite word? Hate. All right. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, and emotionally? Well, I am religious and I'm spiritual. So I grew up extremely traditional religious, um, fundamental Christian, like really deep. But as I've grown into my adulthood, I've realized how important relationships are. And even a relationship with my deity, which is I, I serve God. Um, knowing that that's a part of me, knowing that I'm not alone in that is a great inspiration. And when I'm not connected with that, everything around me suffers. All right. What turns you off? 
negative thoughts, letting the negative thoughts get, because you're going to have them. So let me just put that out there. Everyone deals with negative thoughts. But when you let them take root inside of you, that's the worst. All right. What's your favorite cuss word? Shit. All right. What sound or noise do you love? I am obsessed right now with the soap ASMR channels. I cannot get enough of them scraping the soap off the tubes. I cannot get enough of it. I'm obsessed. So that. What sound or noise do you hate? People chewing. I hate it. All right. What's your favorite color? Black. What's your least favorite color? Anything bright. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Lawyer. What profession other than your own would you not like to do? Nurse. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive? Welcome, thou good and faithful servant. All right. When you arrive at heaven, who would you like to meet? Jesus Christ. Um, what books do you recommend my audience read? Oh, that's a hard one because I'm a heavy reader. Like I'm an I'm like an avid reader. There was this book when I was I was I do a lot. I used to do a lot of leisure reading, and then I started doing like all of the heavy reading. But now I'm like in between. I do a little leisure reading, and then I do like a lot, a little bit of heavy reading. And let me tell you, there was this book called Empty Mansions that I read. I remember sitting in this restaurant enthralled by this book. Is it? It's about this woman who they found dead in her apartment who had long, long nails, long, long hair, and they thought she was a vagabond. She was a multi-millionaire, millions, 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 and died alone in her apartment. Wow. And they did the backstory on her amazing book. It's called Empty Mansions. Go read it. And finally, where can people find you on the web? Okay, um, definitely on Instagram. I'm on Instagram all the time at Akila Peinado. I used to be on Facebook, but not so much. But Instagram, you can hit me up, DM me. Uh, my face is always in the screen. So yeah, there. And that's it, folks. That is Achille, Achille Pinata. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much, Akila. Thank you. Not a problem.